Yet another set of scientists can't resist playing God with the human genome. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. For years, I've worried and warned about the dangers posed by gene editing technology such as CRISPR. In the words of one of its inventors, CRISPR makes the human genome, quote, as malleable as a piece of literary prose at the mercy of an editor's red pen. Well, at least that's the promise that has yet to materialize. In 2018, a Chinese scientist announced he'd use CRISPR to genetically modify human embryos. At the time, more respectable scientists denounced his actions as unethical, given how new the technology was and just how little ethical oversight there was for using it. In essence, this dangerous technology had been released into the world with no limitations except to, quote, play nice. But nearly all of the criticism directed at Dr. He had to do with secondary issues, such as informed consent. Relatively little was said about the possibility of gene edits producing mutations that might produce cancer or other illnesses. And essentially nothing was said about the ethical nature of the technology itself, whether or not editing genes is something we should do at all. Now, why was this ethical outrage so shallow? Two reasons, I suppose. First, science advances today on a philosophical mandate that's barely contained by an ethical utilitarianism. That's just a big worded way of saying that our worship of science comes with an idea that if we can do it, we should do it. And the only thing that limits that is if someone might get hurt. Case in point, The Guardian called CRISPR not a bad idea or a dangerous technology, but, quote, an imperfect tool. Why? Well, because it could lead to off-target edits. That squishy bit of ethical reasoning leads to the second reason I thought that the outrage directed at the Chinese scientist was, as I put it at the time, faux. I believe that other scientists, including those who decried Dr. He as being rogue, were doing the same thing, just more discreetly. In other words, I did not believe that the loud denunciation and even imprisonment of one Chinese scientist would stop others who were just as intent on playing God. And it turns out, it didn't. Apparently, a team of researchers at the Francis Crick Institute in London have used CRISPR to edit 18 donated human embryos. Their purpose, they claim, was to study the role of a particular gene in the earliest stages of human development. Well, unfortunately, about half of the embryos contained major unintended edits. Major unintended edits? It's just a euphemism for mutation and genetic damage, which, as Medium told its readers, could lead to birth defects or medical problems like cancers late in life. As one genetics researcher put it, you're affecting so much of the DNA around the gene you're trying to edit that you could be inadvertently affecting other genes and causing problems. But even worse, the Frick Institute team didn't inadvertently mess with a gene near the ones that they were targeting. In fact, they hit their targets. The results, however, were unexpected. Theodore Ernoff, a professor of molecular and cell biology at Berkeley, put it this way. There's no sugar coating this, he said. This should be a restraining order order for all genome editors to stay the living daylights away from embryo editing. Well, once a gene editing expert gets frightened, you'd think we might want to cool our jets a little in this whole playing God thing, but I doubt it. Scientists ignore restraining orders that lack legal punch. What happened in China didn't deter researchers in London, and what happened in London won't deter anyone either. By the way, all the embryos affected by the Francis Crick Institute team were destroyed. When science operates independently of religion, philosophy, law, or public policy, then researchers, to paraphrase a line from Jurassic Park, become so preoccupied with whether or not they can do something, they never stop and think if they should do something. So the only way forward is that we, working through our elected leaders, will tell scientists no. They're going to whine and moan, as they did when President Bush curtailed embryonic stem cell research. But so what? As it turns out, we didn't need to kill embryos for their stem cells. Likewise, we don't need to play God with the human genome or with unborn children either. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.